My guest today is Hillary Weaver Rob. Hillary, how are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm doing really well. I'm uh, excited to have you on my show because we recorded the interview last year here in Sandusky, Ohio, and um, I haven't figured out who I could blame for this yet, but uh, the, 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 the video itself was damaged. So, round two. Yes, round two. Yes. Uh, what do you do, Hillary Weaver Rob? <laughs> Um, I am a software quality architect at Quicken Loans in Detroit. Okay. Uh, and what, tell me what, uh, what has to happen at Quicken Loans before somebody says, get Hillary. Oh God. Um, <laughs> so hopefully nothing these days. So I'm on a, a regular old production team these days and, um, just acting as a software engineer in test, not uh -huh. really as a, a quality architect right now. Um, but I have played that role as the crisis. Oh God, we have <laughs> um, you know ten teams working together. We need to figure out how to test all of these, um, all of this code that we wrote to work together. Um, bring Hillary in. So, all right. so, you, so your job really is to avoid the crises. So you could catch, uh, you could test the software, catch any problems early on, fix them yeah. before the before Dan Gilbert sees them. Yes, or get somebody, people somebody to talk to each other. Them. Yeah. It's it's a lot about talking to each other. Just communicate. Communicating with each other. Who is that? Um, the software engineers, the business analysts, the PMs, the testers, like everybody together. It's a lot of avoiding that crisis is people actually talking and not just making assumptions. Hmm, um, interesting. So this is even before you start testing. Yes, before. Tell me about that process. Any How does that code is even happen? written. How does that communication happen? Are you, all, are you all in the same room? Um, so there's the, the whole planning ceremonies or whatever for Agile where everybody's in the same room and, you know, uh, the story comes up and everybody estimates on it or whatever. Um, not a lot of talking happens in those sometimes. Um, it's really when you get down to it and you're, okay, this is my task now. I need to write test cases for this story. All right. Um, so I'm looking at the requirements. Do you write those before they start writing code? So the, the BA um, generally in a lot of the, the Agile environments will be the one writing those requirements, mm -hmm. and that has to be ready before we put it into the sprint. Okay. This is just kind of in general. My team so doesn't really work this way. you're planning the way, tests before the, anybody writes any code, or somebody is planning those tests. So, okay, so writing the tests or figuring out what is to be tested is basically at the same time as code will be Imperial. started. Got it. Um, so as a tester, when I'm looking at the, the requirements, I'm looking at, um, how is this code going to be written to solve the issues that are that are here in the in the requirement? Right. Um, and how can it be interpreted? So if it is kind of a vague requirement, then the software engineer may implement it one way. I may test it another way, and the original person that wrote it may expect it to work in a different way. And that's where it helps to talk to each other. Yes, that's right. where you need to talk to each other. All right, and then avoids. So much. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm I'm interested in this process a lot because I've I've been in uh, environments that had poor communication. Everybody le leaves the room with some document and they've heard something and they and they do the example that everybody heard it differently. Mm -hmm. And they go back to their desks and they start working. Uh, when, when does that communication happen and how? So. Um a QA or a tester are sometimes like the glue that holds the team together because they're the ones that kind of find these issues. Okay. Because um, the BA will write it and just pass it on and assume, you know, the team is going to understand if they have questions, they'll ask me. Right. Um, so as a tester, if I see something that's kind of vague or implied, I need to start that conversation. Hmm. So I need to say, okay, this is a little bit uh, of a wonky specification well, that's the technical term wonky. <laughs> very technical right. um not super clear so then you would have something called three amigos <laughs> not the like movie this. the best movie in the world but not that movie um <coughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um you would uh get the dev that's going to be working on it the ba that wrote it and yourself kind of together in a room and have your your three amigos conversation yeah. and clear mm -hmm. up all the you know um, implied things and assumptions because a lot oh, of you might have a plethora yes. of assumptions. Yes, <laughs> always a plethora. Do you even know what that means? <laughs> um, yeah, we can just quote uh, three amigos for the rest of this interview. That'd Could be it be that you are taking this out on the tester because? Uh, <laughs> 
The developer yes. has rejected you. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's you know communication. Uh, communication. Okay. And then um, so so this is kind of funny because um, uh, there's a perception I think that testers get involved at the end. Yes. And you're you're blowing that out of the water right now. Absolutely. You're involved at the beginning, in the middle, and then of course at the end as well. Yes. Um, um, basically, from the beginning through the end. And after the end, uh-huh. so in the end, end, the, the no one else end. is paying attention anymore. Right. Testers well, are still there. Uh, so, uh, tell me about uh, the role of the tester. So, uh, facilitating communication is one part of your role. What? Yeah. Uh, what what's next? Are, uh, assuming that you've done that job and everybody else is in board, and they're 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 all working toward the same goal. You're also uh, kind of the uh, the gatekeeper of quality. So, gatekeeper is. Bad. What do you mean? <laughs> Calling us gatekeepers is bad. Why? Um, so testers should be, we're providing information okay. about the software and the state of the software. Um, we are not the ones that should be making that go, no go decision. Hmm. I've been in that place before as a, a test lead and, you know, the gatekeeper or whatever. And I've been like, well, if it's up to me, I'm going to keep it back. Like we're not, we're not going to prod. Um, and then people get frustrated and they say that, you know, QA is the bottleneck and we're not releasing because of QA. And then the CTO decides to release anyway. Hmm. Um, so he gets to be the good guy. <laughs> he can't. He's like, well, I'm releasing it from QA. Yeah. Not like um, that mean old Hillary. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so really my, my job as a tester is to find all of the issues or, you know, inconsistencies or concerns that I have and provide that information to my stakeholders. Okay. So even if it's an internal application, so the applications I work on right now are all internally used by just other software engineering teams. If we have issues, I bring them to the team and say, you know, here's, here's what's happening. Here's my opinion on it. If we should go or not, what do you guys think? It's, it's more of a, here's the information that I have. Okay, so I think if I can paraphrase, then there's um, at the end of a, a release cycle or a sprint or whatever, you're, um, you'll, you'll do your testing, and there may be some imperfections. There may be some pa- tests that didn't pass. There may be some features that are incomplete, uh, and maybe that's okay. Maybe there, there are tests that are not that important. They're not going to – no kittens will die if, if, uh, if these pe- tests fail, and these features, we can just put them in the next sprint. Um, you'll call attention to that, but you won't. You're not going to be able to hold it back. Somebody else has to make that call. You know what? This is important. This 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 failing test has to be fixed before we go live. Is that yeah a good understanding um, of what you just said? The only correction I would make is that we're not just testing at the end. Oh, okay. So in traditional waterfall and okay. in water fragile or the the waterfall implementation of agile, we're oh, testing at the end. That. I hadn't heard of that water <laughs> fragile. Well, if a sprint's only a week or two. Right. Is it really that bad to wait until a yes. week or two to test? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, tell me about this. This is so, interesting. Um, I don't, I've never been in an environment where they, they tested mid-sprint. Okay. So um, the definition of done, that's that's a whole other thing that we could talk for, for hours about. But the definition of done has to be kind of um, set for the team. Like when something is fully tested or when it is, um, you know, tested by the the tester then we can say that it is done a lot of teams say well i'll be done writing this in a week so that's when it will be done but that's not including the testing so you you are kind of um potentially ignoring the fact that it could take several days to a week to test something, depending on how complex it is. Okay, so maybe this is a matter of semantics. Maybe um, we're including the testing in the sprint, and therefore I'm not uh, to say that it's you test at the end of the sprint is incorrect. Is that right? That's right. So I would start testing something as soon as there is code available for me to test. Okay. I see. So in within a sprint, I should be starting to test things within the first couple of days. Okay. As as soon as a story, because a story. And, you know, you know, agile terms or whatever should take eight hours, Mm -hmm. six hours, eight hours, depending on your your agreement on your team. So I should be able to start testing a day or two after software engineers have started writing code. All right. That's good. That's better. You're not sitting around for 
two weeks. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding about that. Uh, the environments that I was in where testing was uh, at the end of the sprint, uh, they, they were writing the next tests for the next sprint. There was there was sort of a uh, you know kind of a leapfrog going on. Yeah. Uh, but I like your approach better. Uh, tell me about some of the technologies that you use. I think you told me earlier off camera that uh, your team is writing a lot of applications in Node, right? Yep. So we have some in Node, um, some in um, React, and then uh, a legacy application in .NET. Oh, breaks my heart for you to say that. I know. <laughs> it was my favorite one to work on, except for you know, sorry. Well, the Node legacy. Node and JavaScript are cool. <laughs> Uh, what, no, what, so uh, well, let's talk about the, the cool ones, the, the, <laughs> the JavaScript ones. Uh, that's, uh, how are you testing that? What kind of technologies are you using? So for manual testing, um, so we have the, the web front end, and then we have the um, APIs. Okay, so, so we have uh, no, Node is for the APIs, and then uh, you said React for the web front end. For one of them, it's Node for both, for node. the front end and the APIs. Wow. And for the other one, it is... Um, React and I don't know what else. There's a bunch of lambdas and stuff in there. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, but for the so, so that's we'll, interesting. It's probably not important for you to know what technology that one is if you're testing it without knowing what language is written in, for example, or what frameworks. It depends. So this one that uses like all these serverless things, I don't necessarily need to know every single implementation. Okay. Um, but I do need to understand kind of how it's put together to better understand how to test it. Okay. Um, understanding kind of an overarching architecture of the application is really helpful for testing. Um, so with the Node one, it, it doesn't really matter that it's all Node, but it does help me to understand how I'm going to write the test automation for it because um, my personal opinion and my practice um, has been to write the test automation in the language that is used for the production code. And mm -hmm. um, if it can, then my test automation will live with the production code in the same repository. So that means for these, a lot of these applications, you're writing your test code in JavaScript? Yes, okay. which has been a learning curve for me. So I've been living in the happy land in the .NET world for a while, uh -huh. and uh, having to train my brain on JavaScript has been Interesting. Uh, what, uh, so JavaScript is um, it's evolving very fast the last few years. So you're you're getting at a good time. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> years ago, it was uh, it was kind of a sucky language, just just between you and me. Okay. <laughs> and it's uh, it's way less sucky now. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Uh, what what kind of testing tools do you use? So um, for the API testing, um, manual testing, I'll use Postman generally. Mm -hmm. Um, and then for automation, I'll write that automation um, in you know the language that I'm using. So for JavaScript uh, right now, um, for the API test, I'm using uh, SuperTest. That's a frame a JavaScript testing framework. Yes, okay. for um, for API testing. Okay. And then uh, with Mocha, and then um, what does Mocha do? Mocha is the the just the test framework. So like mm -hmm. you can use it for unit tests as well. It's just a to help you write your unit tests and everything better. Mm -hmm. um, and then just for the for the front end testing, um, manual testing, I you know just go through the, the user interface, the, the website um, with Chrome. Chrome's the only browser that we're supporting right now for this hmm. application, so I don't have is to do Is it an internal site then? It is an internal site, so I don't have to do um, cross-browser testing, which is a whole other thing. That's hard. Yeah. Um, and uh, I use dev tools in the browser a lot to kind of understand how um, the application is talking to the API and how so those it sounds calls like are the being made. you're not automating the front end testing is that right um, I am but that is kind of not um, a first uh, priority okay um, the UI um, the UI automation is slower oh uh, yeah um, slower to write slower to run um well I don't, it's slower than uh automated unit testing but it's probably faster than a human being clicking isn't it it is faster than a human being clicking um and currently where we are in our application we have a lot of ui changes so, so it it's fragile so it's fragile so it didn't make a lot of sense for me to do that but mm -hmm. getting um the api tests automated was uh kind of higher priority because mm -hmm. that is pretty stable um and 
we can just have those in our CI CD pipeline. So running whenever we have code merged, um, we have the API test running and making sure we didn't break anything. Excellent. Yeah. Is there anything we haven't talked about that we should have? I don't think so. I don't know. Hillary, thanks a lot. Thank you. Our friends in technology can be moose. <laughs>